Okay? So, hello everybody. It's uh, Wednesday, May the 10th, uh, 2023. Uh, Wednesday concert series. Thanks for being here or watching on video later. Um, today, we're very happy to be joined by Severin Bainan, who's one of our faculty members here at Valley College. And Natalie, I'm going to mispronounce your last name. Breka. Breka. Uh, I was going to be playing violin and viola. Um, Severin, as I said, is on our faculty here. He teaches music, co he teaches music theory, yeah. um, music fundamentals. Yeah. You do it all. <laughs> you do it all, right? So it, it, maybe we can come over. Teach, teach people how to sing. Though. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we, can, we can work on that. Um, why don't you come over so you can be on camera? You can sit and we'll talk a little bit about. So Severin, a lot of the music you're going to hear today uh, was written by Severin. Uh, he writes in a lot of different styles, mm -hmm. I would say, um, and he'll, we'll ask him to talk a little bit about that, maybe if there's anything to, what to listen for in some of the pieces during okay. the concert, that might yeah. be great. Yeah. But I wanted to start, we've been talking a lot in music appreciation about, uh, we've been talking about Pulitzer Prize winning compositions. <laughs> so we've listened to what won this year, this oh, yeah. uh, oh. opera Omar, that just, oh, really? just, oh, yeah. just came oh, out this week. Yeah. We listened to a piece from last year, which was, uh, uh, Voiceless Mask by Raven Chacon. He was the first indigenous American to win an award. And then we've listened to Kendrick Lamar, who won in 2018. We listened to Wynton Marsalis before that, right? So in that, in that, those, that listening and those conversations have been, what makes music good? Right. So, so I'm gonna throw you on the spot a little bit, and, and you say, or, or you, can, you, can, you can maybe answer the question as a composer, when, when you feel music you've written is good, what does that mean for you? What do you strive for? Or what is important for you in a composition? Well, I, I was just thinking about you know, the music after like the 1970s, 80s, all the, you know, where uh, composers were, were trying, were kind of reacting to uh, the, what was happening right after the Second World War. And uh, they were used, they were trying to uh, experiment with tonal composition again, which you probably talked about, but it was, it was kind of, um, it didn't really uh, gel, I think, in some ways. So it's, it, uh, some of it sounded like it was very tonal and then there was some, some dissonance on, put on top of that, but I think the music now that I, that I really like is music that's integrated, that's, that seems to be able to cross from uh, very dissonant music to very consonant music in a more fluid way. And I think mm -hmm. the composers in the last uh, maybe 10, 12, 20 years have been able to do that. And yeah, do you think that's out of a, a, a desire to, I don't know if this is the right way to say it, but to kind of, I mean, well, let me put it this way, you know, atonal music, very dissonant music, of course, got a very bad reputation. Yeah. I'm like, I can't even listen to it. What, yeah. what is there to listen to? So could this be a way to maybe uh, legitimize atonality or dissonance by pairing it with, with more, or to make it more palatable for people? Is that mm -hmm. I, I, necessarily? I, no, I think it's just, I think it's just uh, composers, uh, you know, have had a lot of different influences now. Right. And they, you know, I listen to popular music, I listen to jazz, I listen to whatever. And uh, so I think there's not this this um, kind of tunnel vision with it. I think it's right. more open. Right, or you didn't, we, you know, before, you know, people grew up with a more sort of narrow tonal yeah, right. world, you know. Right. I, I remember growing up, all I had was kind of the albums that my parents had. Yeah, so right. that's what I started listening to yeah. first. I didn't really start buying my own music until right. I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. So you get a certain sonic world that that's you live right. in, and that's kind of what you know. Yeah, yeah. that's right. So anything that's out of the ordinary. Um, yeah, I remember going to see a uh, yellow submarine, right? And like, <laughs> I like staring at the screen, like, what is this? This is crazy sounding stuff, you know. Right. But even something like that. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, so that is something that you try and do in your music. You think to try and integrate this, or to in a more fluid way, bring these different yeah. styles together. Yeah. I'm. I'm my, I, the way that I do it is is kind of a technical thing with. Uh, I'm sure you've talked about intervals and, and a little chords. bit, yeah. yeah. Sort of the uh, the fundamentals of music from early on in our semester, right? Yeah, pitch and rhythm and so on. So the way I do it is that I I use a limited uh, palette kind of, of of intervals and harmonies, 
and I and I and I kind of recycle those, and I and they relate to one another. It's hard to explain uh, if you're not, you know, reading a lot of music, but that I I do it. That's the way I do it, and it allows me to um, to go from very uh, what we call tonal or, or or consonant music to very dissonant music in in a short in a pretty short span of time. I see. Well, we certainly have talked about repetition and variation, the importance of that, sort of yeah. in a broad, sort of broad scope. Yes, yeah. into music that seems like it just is repetitive, but then you listen closely and there's slight variations on yeah. it, or, or even some you know large works, of, yeah. you know, like Beethoven Five, and mm -hmm. starts with this little idea yeah, and then right. develops it and yeah. varies it and changes yeah. it and so on. Right? And yeah, and uh, the, some of the music you'll hear today is is based. Uh, very closely on the structure of some Beethoven pieces. And uh, I'll, I'll play a little bit of those as we go through the concert so you can, you can hear how it relates. So in the last, I don't know, few years, I've become very interested in looking at uh, old forms and kind of uh, putting my music into those, into those, um, it's a kind of like a container. And, uh, and so I've been, that's what I've been really uh, doing the last few years, and um, among other pieces that I've written, but the piano pieces and the piece that I, pieces that I write for like small group, like bass drums and piano, or bass drums and piano and horn, that's what I've been doing. Yeah, and we've listened to sonata form, right? Remember, we've okay. listened to sonata form. Yeah, you'll pieces. hear a sonata form. We've today. listened to uh, song form, ABA yeah. song form, and a few others, right? Yeah. So that's what he's talking about, having that. So yeah. why are you particularly drawn to doing that, and why Beethoven? Uh, be well, Beethoven is, 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 he's so clear. That's one part of it. He's, he's very clear about where things start and where things end and where the new idea begins and and um, and I also like the way he um, the, the way he transitions like for instance he'll take a, 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 a little uh, motive what we call a motive a short melody and he'll break it down into smaller and smaller pieces so that you know, it'll start with you know like bum 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 he'll repeat that and then he'll go da 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 and there there are ways that he'll um he'll work with the material so they're they're not um but my my wife asked me when I was working on something she said well what are you thinking about you know you're thinking and I was like, I'm really thinking about uh, intervals. <laughs> I'm not thinking about anything else. But I think you'll hear that the 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 emotional part of it it comes through no matter what. Okay, but so, you're not necessarily thinking that. You're thinking more from starting from the technical side. Yeah, getting it to work as a puzzle, putting yeah. the puzzle together, yeah. and then seeing what comes out of that. And and uh, Beethoven and and. Haydn and I've been working on a Mozart recently. They have a really uncanny um, feel for uh, when things need to end and when new things need to start. And I think that's one of the things that I'm learning now. When I'm, I should have done this, you know, 40 years ago. But I'm doing it now, <laughs> looking at it and, and uh, you know, seeing how how they uh, solve these problems. And a prob one of the problems that composers have is when do you stop and how do you stop you know do i you know do i you know bring things down like this or do i bring things up like that and stop suddenly and those are those are those kinds of things are are um, things that i think beethoven really that was part of his mastery, is that, is that... You, you could just write pieces that never stop, right? Right. <laughs> yes, we, we just listened to some of a Lou Reed album in class, <laughs> right? An electronic <laughs> album, and Benjamin suggested we listen to it, and he said on the B side, um, it goes on for an hour, you know, it's, just, right. it's electronic sound, basically, yeah. in the right. sonic world. But he said on the B side that it's built into it, like there's a skip that's built into the very end, so the record never stops. Unless oh my actually, God! Unless you get up and actually turn it off, and keep going and keep going and keep going. Oh, that's good. 
Uh, sort of pretty, pretty yeah. funny, right? That's great. <laughs> that could be an option for you. Well, in the last couple of minutes before we will take a then five minutes before the concert, so okay. sorry. Can you maybe play a few things or what to listen for? Or yeah. Some of the ideas you were yeah. just talking about a little bit. Uh, so uh, one of the pieces that you'll hear is, is electric soil, and uh, this is this is based on on uh, one of Beethoven's. Uh, sonatas, sonata form. It's, it's, the, it's the finale of one of the sonatas, and um, it it has this this opening phrase that goes like this. So it's a unison, both hands doing the same thing. So I stole that, <laughs> and uh, sampling, right? <laughs> Yeah. So mine goes like this. So it's, it has a different feel to it, but I'm using that that um, that structure. And later on, he does this odd thing. This long phrase that that doesn't happen anywhere else in the piece, and. Um, so I stole that, <laughs> and that that sounds like same kind of thing. So sometimes I actually steal uh, melodic ideas, but other times I just use the, the form. In other words, uh, you know, if he does this, it could be something completely different. But the thing that he does. So it could be something, you know, like it could be something like that that I it doesn't have anything to do with the way the way the music sounds, but it it has to do with the structure of it. So that's uh, you know interesting, interesting. I I might need to put you on the spot, but Natalie, do you have anything based on this to add in, from the point of view of a string player or when you play? Do you write music as well? I write music, but it is not as brilliant as Severin. <laughs> I write simple songs in comparison, but um, yeah, I, I am so opposite from him. I don't start from the form, I don't start from the tone right, structure. Right, right. I start from a tune in my head. That reminds me that you wake up and going, where yeah, did that come from? I start from a walk around the block and a, a funny thing I think about and then I keep repeating those words until some more words come out and then I start and now I have a sentence and then I start humming it and then really? so for me it's much more about it's, it's just a different process yeah, yeah. Got it. and then at some point do you think about the form or do you just absolutely let it, then yeah. I do yes once I have a sentence or I have a phrase or some sort of a motive right then you take it home and then you record myself playing it and then I might say, okay, now what happens next? You know, then you have to come up with yeah. a, a story. So you only have one sentence in the story. Right. right. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, actually, one of my pieces that we'll do today also is is kind of like that. Yeah. It popped into your head, and then you had to follow it. Yeah. On and, the right and I didn't quite know what it was about, and then I changed the the title. You changed of the title of it. <laughs> right. That's right. You changed the title. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's something that comes to you later, the title, or sometimes not. Sometimes yeah. Right yeah. Away, well, or sometimes later. After I started it, I, I started to think about my mother, and I, I thought, well, I've never written anything really for my mother, so I thought, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, and then I just kind of let it go to wherever it went. So, I see. And it's not finished yet. So. Okay. <laughs> Is that a description of your mother? She went wherever she wanted. It kind to of. Go. Yeah. It was never quite finished. Yeah. Yeah. She was. Uh, she when she, she lived to be ninety nine years old, and she uh, when my sister said, you know, you know, you better come home. But, you know, I think my mom's on the way out. You know, and so so I said she she told my mom that I was on her on the way there to back to Minnesota, and she said, well, tell him he won't see much. <laughs> 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 so, that's sad and very sweet. Yeah, yeah. At the same time. So she, she died, she died yeah. very soon after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, okay. that, that's what she was like. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, well, uh, so thank you for this. We'll take a little five minute. We'll let some other people in the room. Okay. And then we'll start the concert. And does anyone have any questions for them about what they've just talked about? Or anyone thinking of being a songwriter or a composer? Or all right, you can think Thanks about it. Thanks for coming. You can, yeah. you, can take less, you can take classes with Severin. Yeah.